when when we had the cast trip, I was a, like they gave it to me, and she refused to come. And she said it was because of her blood clots, and maybe it was, but I know she still travels. Um, she refused to come. She walked out of scenes all the time. Which she would be angry, or upset. She'd be like, "I'm out." And I didn't even know we had the option to do that. Like I'm like, I would never walk off a set. Like maybe I should have, should you know? But you know, listen, when it's you, you can always find a way to justify and be like, "Well, they, you don't know, they were mean to me, or they did this to me." But Hollywood entertainment business is a hard business, and you got to have your big girl draws on. You do. And when things are uncomfortable and get hot and get, uh, get awkward, if your instinct gets to run out of it all the time and run away, then it's probably not the business for you. And she was nasty to like cameramen and like, you know, just other workers, so to speak. I didn't see her being nasty to cameramen when I was there. Um, but I'm, I remember we had a therapy session with Dr. Jeff and she was definitely on one that day. You can go back and look at that footage. And we were just trying to have a, we actually were having a real therapy session about, you know, the issues and about her narcissism, really, and about her never taking accountability. And I think people were pretty much handling her with kid gloves, but it still wasn't good enough. We still were being mean. I'm like, sometimes when you hear criticism about yourself, it sounds like an attack, but it's not. We wanted to get along. At the end of the day, from that therapy session, it seemed most of us wanted to get along. We did. And I'm glad that there was a, you know, at the reunion, stuff you guys didn't see, but, you know, we squashed it. And she sent me an email afterwards saying, I know we're not in a good place, but thank you for the things you said. And I'm like, listen, as much as we have our little fights on TV, I, don't, I have no desire to fight with people for real, for real. Like, we can have our little scene, and then it shouldn't carry over into real life where we're having, we have anxiety over it. Shit's uncomfortable if I see you out. Like, nah, like, life is short, man. Life is short. Like if, no, go on. I'm saying, let's have a little scene, have a little fun, throw a little shade, and then guess what? Let's go for drinks after and laugh at how much, how it was a great TV we just gave these motherfuckers and how we gonna get a raise next season because we just brought it. That's a perfect world for me. Not really be mad and really be on social media and really be, you know what I mean? Like you see the person out, it's like, <sighs> like these girls, these reality TV girls, y'all gotta start looking at this like as a, as a as theater everybody knows reality is produced like there are real things trust me but like don't take it so seriously don't take it so much to heart and let that shit roll off your back and get your money get your money i agree i feel like back in the day that's how it was i don't understand it either like you're making a lot of money you can keep making a lot of money just act just do the scene give the people what they want it's real and then just get over it Go, like you said, go go out for drinks and laugh that you're going to get more money next year. I don't yeah. get it. Or you can even do a heads up before, like, hey, girl, I got to read you today or I got to check you about something. You know how it is. Like, I did a reality TV show with um, New York, The Next 15, and we were cool in real life, but she was about to go off on me in one, one day on the scene, right? And she winked at me before the scene and then proceeded to do her thing. Guess what? We both enjoyed it because we were both like, we got them. They're beating this shit up. And at the end of the day, I don't hate her. She doesn't hate me. I can see her out. We hug each other. We take pictures for the gram. And it's like the, the anxiety and the negative and the stomach ache you get when you would see someone that you don't really like. You don't have any of that. And if y'all just look at it like that, like, listen, it ain't all, I, I'm not going to sit and tell y'all that it's all fake. It's not. There's real feelings and real emotions on these shows. But I just want the cast members for their own mental like, health to not bring that shit home and like not really make it a real war. Like, it should be fun. You're getting paid crazy money to have drinks with a group of people, shoot it, get club booking, get endorsement deals, and then hopefully it leads to some other stuff. Don't fuck it up because you can't like separate it. Like you can't turn it off ever. That's my opinion. And you and you filmed all this as a friend and told Puerto Rico, and then that's when you just went about your business. And the producer said, uh, "Wait a second. They said uh, the network wants to give you peach. And then we did a whole photo shoot. With, wait, did we do the peach photo shoot? I think we did a peach photo shoot, but prior, like in case something happens. And then they just rolled out those photos and. 
so we did all this. The show was in production. It wasn't like, so I still was announced at the beginning of the season. Cause like, you know, we shoot like in the summer and then I think it starts airing in like November. Yeah. So by then they, you know, they knew that they wanted me to be, be a housewife. And I was like, Oh shoot, this is crazy. I just came on as the homie and I'm doing my Bravo photo shoots and vlogs. And then they were saying I was the most talked about character. And I remember RuPaul was on watch what happens live. And he's like, she's a, the um, breakout star. And I was like, Oh my God, RuPaul knows who I am. And Regina King was talking about, it was just like dope. Like I have great, I have good memories. And again, I, I'm still friends with Cynthia and Kenya, Demetria, Candy, I, you know, to this day, we're still cool. Did they all make you, like you felt welcome by all the other girls pretty much? For the most part, yeah. Yeah, I did. What? I think they liked having the new energy. I think they enjoyed having the new energy. What would you say if you ran into Nini right now after this interview, like within the next hour? <laughs> um, I know you're going to be mad and think that I'm just using your name for clickbait. First of all, I never brought your name up. I was uh, answering questions about you. And accept your position in the entertainment business as, in reality, TV, you're an icon. So people are going to ask people who have spent any time with you about you. So don't try not to look at it so much as a negative. Um, and take the constructive criticism from people. I mean, I'm not coming from a negative place. I don't hate her. Um, I actually felt really sad for her when I saw her crying on her video when she said she wasn't coming back. And it looked like someone that was actually heartbroken. Um, everyone giving you criticism is not trying to hurt you or shade you. They actually, some of them are trying to help you and um accept it you know like and, and if you don't go back to the housewives or you don't go back to bravo you know maybe the next opportunity that comes around um really appreciate it and set boundaries and and don't take it for granted as someone who's lost it all got it all back lost it all got it all back that feeling of, oh my God, I don't know when my next thing's gonna come. I get it and it's scary and you wanna like burn everything down, like fuck everybody, they did me wrong. But sometimes you gotta just like think about the big picture. Think about the big picture. Don't come this far to never be seen again. And this business will blacklist your ass in a second. They've done it to other people. So try to make it cool, smooth it out and, and pick the piece back up. Get you another show, girl. I don't know what it'd be, but you got a fan base. You got a big fan base. People want to see you on TV. And you think if she continues down this road, she might? Yeah, listen, look at all the basketball wives from, um, shit, the first basketball wives. They were the talk of the town, then people stopped talking about them. You know what I mean? Like the ones from like years ago. There's some that you don't even ever hear their names anymore. And they were like, that was like, a, at some point, mostly shows were super hot and popping and trending and they go away and then you never hear from them again. And it, you don't always get these opportunities. So when you do, please be appreciative of the producers that are willing to take a chance on you. Please be appreciative of the networks that are willing to give you an opportunity and a platform and a big paycheck. Does that mean you have to compromise yourself? Absolutely not. Don't mean that. But pick your battles. If it's something minor or if it's something that you did, take accountability and responsibility and fix that. Make it where they can't get rid of you. They don't want to get rid of you. Be so easy to work with that everyone's dying to hire you. Be a pleasure to be with, a joy to work with. To the cameraman, to the makeup artist, to craft services. Listen, I walk in the studio, I say hello to everyone. I bring donuts, I buy breakfast, I do all of that. When I, I'm the new host of Love and Hip Hop, the reunions. And when I walked in, I was my normal self, saying hello to everybody, being polite and you know, and everybody was like, oh my God, you're so nice. I'm like, I am? Is this not normal? And they were just like, I mean, not always. And I go, I almost wanted to hug them. Like, I feel, I, have you been hurt before? You know, like when I get a job, I'm happy. Cause I'm like, hell yeah, more money. I got another job. I don't get why you get a job and you walk in with an attitude. I don't get when you get a booking that pays you crazy money for two days of work that you would just be having, be, where's the chip on your shoulder it it should be nothing there you should be so ha i'm still grateful when I, I, I just as grateful as when i got my first gig and jumped up and down screaming 
when I got a role in this movie, Celtic Pride, like 20 some years ago. I think I was 26 years ago. I remember jumping up and down, like, I got the part, I got the part. When I get gigs now, I'm still that same little girl. I'm still that way. And I think when you, when you are grateful and you keep that same spirit, you're still gonna keep, you're gonna keep on getting bookings. When the moment you stop feeling like it's, it's due to you, you're entitled, they should have picked me. I think you take the, the beauty away out of it. You know what I mean? 